All right, microphone check, microphone check. One, two, one, two. How we doing, everybody? What's going on? Welcome to the podcast, Therapy Without a Degree, Chapter 51. There it is, Chapter 51, Breaking in These 50s. All right, y'all. So before we start the episode, I just wanted to say this podcast is brought to you by Easy Life Affordable Cleaning. All right. Um, Easy Life Affordable Cleaning is actually based out of New Jersey and the New York area. All right. They do full service home cleaning um, as well as move in, move out service. All right. Uh, commercial cleaning, office cleaning. All right. All that shit. Also, yard cleaning and snow removal. It's been snowing a lot, so I know y'all definitely need some of that. It's probably going to snow more um, Monday. It's going to be snowing, all right? So hit them up, Easy Life Affordable Cleaning Services, all right? Um, and also a fun fact, <laughs> that actually, that's my business, all right? So that's my business. I am sponsoring the podcast, and uh, check us out. Check us out on Instagram, all right? Easy Life Cleaning. Also got the Facebook page going on. All right, I figured, you know, shit, most of us, we don't got the time for all that shit. Like, we clean and all that, but most of us work really, really hard. So I figured we need something something pretty affordable. You know, some some people we could hire that is going to clean, get it done efficient, great, at a very good price. Okay? Uh, this podcast is also brought to you by Drive Smart, Buy Smart. All right, you're going to want to hit them up. Uh, check out the Instagram. They got really cool content on the Instagram. It's at drive smart, buy smart. Um, check them out. Okay, basically, it's basically buying a car wholesale price. All right, you can't beat that. Um, you don't even really have to leave your house. All right, these people will actually come to you. They'll come to the house. You could buy the car, do all the finance, do all the paperwork right there. Um, they charge only a very, very small fee, and they get you a car at wholesale price. So you don't got to worry about hustling these salesmen or anything like that because they don't get no commission for it. They're willing to get you, you know, the best deal, all right? So hit them up, drive smart, buy smart. And other than that, what up, y'all? What's going on? Um, It's just me again this week, but it's all good. Hopefully, y'all don't mind uh, listening to me, listening to my voice. Uh, a couple days ago was actually my birthday, so shout out to me, shout out to 28, I'm 28 years old, my birthday was January 3rd, um, a lot of people hit me up on the, the podcast Instagram account, so I really, really appreciate that, that was really, really dope, I'm surprised some of you guys actually even knew about it, but you already know, Capricorn season, Capricorns, yeah, they're, they're one of my favorite signs. Capricorn is one of my favorites as well as uh, Virgos. So shout out to any Virgos and Capricorns listening. All the other signs, y'all cool, y'all cool. But, you know, Capricorns is where it's at. Um, So, yeah. Again, since it's just me, we're not going to go crazy long. I don't like to do a crazy long podcast as if it's, if it's just me. But we definitely needed a podcast. And what I wanted to touch on was... This one wasn't a topic sent to us. I like to keep the topics that are actually sent to us when it's, you know, me and a couple other people so we can kind of really dig deeper. And yeah, I usually think my opinion is a little wild anyway. So, but what I wanted to talk about was loving an addict. Oh, and wait, before we get to this, I did say on Facebook that we had a, uh, a Lodi guest that is still happening. However, not this week. All right, so don't hate me. This is that's not happening. Uh, they were very busy, so we are definitely still happening. Though that's definitely still gonna happen. So stay tuned. <laughs> but yeah, man. Um, this episode, I'm not gonna go into a deep because I I also I I need to have this conversation with other people um, to see their feedback and and to have y'all really get some other perspective because i think y'all have heard a little bit of what i had to say about this but not really so we're gonna, we're gonna touch upon it um it's about loving an, an addict and you know loving someone that suffers from uh you know substance abuse whether it is alcohol whether it is drugs uh pills you know whatever the case is 
I know it's extremely hard, and a lot of people forget about it. It's kind of one of those underrated uh, issues, I, I would say. I, I mean, you know, everyone knows, you know, obviously being addicted to shit is horrible and all that, and, and that's not cool. But a lot of people forget that, you know, there's people that love those people, and shit, it ain't easy, all right? I've been there. I've had very, very close family members. Um, I've also had very, you know, a lot of friends that were caught up in that. And and loving an addict is not easy um, for many reasons. But you know, some people some people may not know. And I kind of just wanted to go over some stuff. So you know, we'll take it from here, and hopefully, I'll enjoy it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a Facebook post um, that actually kind of inspired me. To, to talk about this and, and I'm not going to obviously say no names I don't want to put their business out You know like that I did message them And I did let them know um, I thought what they wrote was was It intrigued me And I, and I figured that we need to talk about it Alright so I'm going to read their post And then we'll go from there um, It says I usually don't get too personal Or go into details about many things on here as there's plenty enough drama floating around to last. In regards to my brother, I'm still going to stick with that mantra. I don't know what that means. If your family or close friends of mine, or of my family, you pretty much know his story. For those who aren't, I will say this. He is typical of anyone who has an ongoing or had a long-term substance abuse problem. He has caused my family a lot of anger, sadness, shame, embarrassment, pain, animosity due to his choices in life. Due to that, he really hasn't been a part of my life over the last 20 years. I've tried to distance the kids and I from him whenever possible. I don't really trust him after all that's gone on. Prior to him going to prison in 2012, I hadn't spoken to him for some time. An incident occurred where I found him in possession of a friend's stolen bike. That was the last straw for me. I was done with him. Once again, he had embarrassed me and pissed me off. Flash forward to this year. My dad asked me if I would be willing to pick him up from prison. I initially laughed to myself. I hadn't spoken to them in over five years. Had no contact with him whatsoever while he was incarcerated. Why in the hell would I want to take time off work and go pick his ass up all the way two and a half hours away? I gave it some thought and said I would go up and pick him up. I was up front with my dad and saying he he wasn't coming home with me, nor was my house open for him to stay at. Hold up. Other arrangements were made, so there was no worry about him having to crash with me. I don't regret my decision of going up to get him and spending a day with him. He has his moments where he is funny as hell and I do miss that about him. I got to thinking on my drive up that I would like to play hockey with him again at some point, even if it's just a stick time again like we did a few times before he went away. Someone mentioned yesterday that they had hoped I could get over the past. That would take a lot. Only time will tell. It's a lot. You know? Um, and it, this, this, like I said, this post kind of really got to me. Because I'm like, yo. I, I know mad people go through this. There's so many people that go through this. You know? Because. You know, you think about where we are today um 2018 by the way happy new year everybody happy new year you know you think about today with such the ec- epidemics we have and all the issues going on and and all the people that are just fucking around with stupid shit like we all know that right well, well a lot of us don't even know that but then there's also people that love those people you know, and there's people that care about those people, or there was people that once did really love those people. So, 
it's a lot of people that are affected by it. You know what I mean? It's not just the people that are fucked up. It's other people as well. And like I said earlier, it's very underrated that that fact that, you know, people forget. Like, yo, just because, you know, there's a fucking someone that's on drugs, it ain't just them. It's it's affecting their life. They have they could have kids, they could have people, they could have family members, they could have anybody, just someone that just loves them. You know? So Yeah. Um where were we where are we even gonna start with this post? So to me, it's kind of sad that they're like, oh, I initially laughed to myself. I haven't spoken to them in over five years. I know it's hard, yo. Like, I know it's really hard in this situation. Like, this is this is definitely a topic that could be talked about and broken down for many, many chapters. And we're always going to get back to this. But you have to, man. You have You have to keep in touch with them. You know, in over five years, that's crazy. Like, I don't, I don't, that saddens me to hear that. You know what I mean? Like, I, I know they hurt you. And, and everything that you even said earlier, you said, he has caused my family a lot of anger, sadness, shame, embarrassment, pain, animosity. I understand that. But it depends, man. If if you really love the person, if this is your brother, like, you had to love this person for a good amount of time in your life, you know? I mean, everybody fucks up. Everybody, everybody does something, but I don't know. Like, come on, you can't do that because you're leaving yourself room to ask, what if? Later on, what if something happens? You know, they're always not going to be there. Like, like you basically, at the end of this, you're basically saying, like, yo, I want to play hockey with him again. I want to enjoy those times. So, so why? Why why are you distancing yourself from somebody for five years? Like, yeah, they were in prison and you didn't know what they were doing before prison. Like, yo, sometimes people really do need you. And I, I'm I'm a firm believer in that, you know. But you don't want to get yourself take, taken up because it, in this with addiction and, and people that are caught up in it, shit, they could definitely bring down someone else's whole other world and you can't stop your life because it's for someone else. All right. They got to get their own fucking shit together. I get that. But, you know, they've caused embarrassment. I get that. OK, I know it could be many embarrassing moments. And like you said about. You found him in possession of a friend's stolen bike. All that shit. Yo, they could do some wild shit. But what I think people fail to realize and remember is that these drugs, they make them not them. You know, like, they're not those, they're not who they really are when they're, when they're, when they're fucked up. You know, like people lose themselves. I don't know how else to explain it, but people really do lose themselves like fucking brain cells fucking deteriorate when they're on these drugs are just not them. They're literally sick. So it's like, yeah, they do these crazy fucking things. But at the end of the day, you have to know that it wasn't on purpose, you know, like they have a problem, you know, like, shit ain't fucking easy, so, that's just the first thing, I just kind of want y'all to remember, is just that, those drugs completely change who those people are, you know, it's not like, like, you're not getting mad at fucking, you know, whatever, let's make up a fucking name and call him John, you know, like, yeah, John fucked up and John might have stole some fucking shit from you or whatever. But John's not John, you know, like that's not like these these fucking drugs and, and the substances and all this bullshit. <coughs> Sorry, they just 
they completely changed somebody, okay? That's why they're so devastated. It's not like weed. It's not like any of that. You know, they really, really, really definitely fuck with people. And they, and they need to get their help, all right? So, I don't know. I just don't think people should take it so personal. And, and I, it hurts. I've been there. I've had shit from people I love fucking steal from me, all that. But at the end of the day, is the person I love doing that? No. So, I think at the end of the day, we have to just find a way for them to get help if we really love them okay that's the goal because that's how the other shit's gonna that's how the shit's gonna stop like you know who they are at the end of the day if you know they're just not a bad person but now they're all of a sudden they're starting to do all this wild shit so how about we try to figure out how to get them to help all right um you know shit i don't know the fucking orders i don't, I don't know the steps whatever this and that but I'm just saying, at the end of the day, try not to judge. And also, you know, we all sin, okay? This is one thing I don't like about about the world. <laughs> I'm going to make a fucking book about the shit I don't like about the world. Is that, you know, we, we, we bash and we really ridicule um, drug abusers. However, we all sin, right? Nobody's fucking perfect. Like, there's a saying, and I, and I really fucks with it, it's called, you know, not it's called, it goes, you know, don't judge someone because they sin different than you do. Like, you know, like, it's it's wild. I've seen fucking alcoholics talk shit and talk down upon fucking drug abusers. Get the fuck, get the, out of here, yo, y'all both are bugging. So, I don't know, like... Don't judge someone because they sin differently than you do, all right? I guarantee you do some wild shit or you do something that's fucked up and not right. So don't be judging other people. Like, yo, chill with the judging, all right? If you're going to have anything to say about them, maybe try to get it something to where you're going to help them, all right? And most of those drugs, they overtake someone's mind. They're not usually in the right fucking position to even want to help themselves so they need something they need somebody okay however you still got to worry about your life that's on a whole nother subject all right so we're gonna get to a couple things um with that i just wanted to remind y'all like basically with that dude don't take their addiction personally you know it's not about you. They're not trying to hurt you. And just as you didn't create their addiction, you can't control or cure it. All right? You really can't at the end of the day. You 100% can't cure it. It really has to be them. No matter how much you love them, your love cannot stop. Stop their addiction. All right? You could definitely help. I do believe you need to be there. Okay? You need to help. But you're not going to be the one to cure it. They have to want it too. But sometimes you need to help mold them. Help them put them in the right position. Alright. Um, like. With being fucked up in drugs and all that. Like. They're in a deadly compulsive cycle. You know. Just. You have to really learn about the addiction. Okay. Um. Also, stop, stop the shame, you know, just going back to what I said about sinning, like being an addict, especially in the world we live in today, they already know, they know the deal, they know what's up, they know what's wrong, all right, but they fucked up and they, and they, and they got it, they got to it, not all of them, some of them, might, I know they're, they're doing wrong, but an addict is already being ridiculed with shame, Okay. They are using to blot out shame, in fact, of who they are. So a lot of times, they just fucking use and they use and they use and they use just to, to try to stop the shame so they don't have to deal with it, all right? And most of the time, they're ashamed that they're using and, and they can't stop. The last thing they need is to, to be told they're a disappointment, all right? Like, try to have compassion, all right? Just, 
like remember that someone who is active an active like addict they're in like huge amounts of pain and they're very out of they're very like not kind of in control like it, it's hard to really explain like yes they're they're in control cuz cuz it's their life but when you're using, you're just stopping having the ability to have control, you know? Like, it's just a fucked up cycle. So just please, like, don't... It's hard, yo. It's hard to have that compassion when you see someone fucking up their life. And they're hurting you and they're hurting everybody in the fucking process. But they're not them, okay? You have to remember that. Like, with that... See them as a sick person, not as a bad person. You know, I mean, that's just my opinion. Like, they, when you have that addiction, it's, it's, it's like a sickness. They have to, you have to help them just get over it. You have to let them fight it. Because most of the times, it's literally in their blood. It's not just a decision. It's not just, sometimes it's not just mind over matter. Sometimes, literally, these drugs enter in their fucking bloodstream. And then it's literally a sickness until they feel better again. So, you know, it's, it's just, shit ain't easy. It ain't fucking peaches and fucking cream. It ain't one, two, three, like a lot of people think. People think, oh, one, two, three, you could just stop. Okay, it's not. It's not that fucking simple. All right. <sighs> try, like, try to remember. Try to remember who they were before they fell into the addiction. Okay, and and remember that they can be that person again. And also maybe try to help them out and try to help them remember who they were. Okay? And let them know that they can be that person again. It's just what they're going through right now was only temporary. They could definitely break through. Okay? Like just whatever you can hold on to their humanity. And communicate don't be afraid to have conversations with them. You know, um, it could be very, very draining. You know, you, you're going to probably need timeouts and it's going to be exhausting. Cause like I said, a lot of times people forget, people always know about the addict, about the addict, but they forget about the people that love them. So I get it. It's going to be draining. It's going to be hard. It's going to be very, it's a, it's a job in itself. You know, love an addict. I feel like that's a fucking job because you feel like at the end of the day, you're taking care of them. But communicate with them. Let them know how much you love them at the end of the day. Okay. Sometimes people need to hear that. All right. Because with, with addiction, a lot of times depression comes right with it. All right. Like. You could communicate with somebody and then, you know, if you need a break, that's cool. But don't make it feel like you're abandoning them, all right? Like, I wouldn't give them the silent treatment, you know, stuff like that. Don't feel like you're ignoring them because it's just going to it's just gonna want them to go right back to using. You know, you just have to be very careful with how you're going to react with them, okay? Um, you know, they, they definitely need that emotional support. And don't lose hope because the addict, them, the person that you're loving, they already lost hope. For them to continue doing what they're doing, most of the time they lost hope or they're not mentally in the right place to find their hope. So they need you to believe that they can get better because they probably don't think they can. Many people do actually recover, okay? There's there's millions of people in this world that do recover, okay? Like, they really, really do. And, and a lot of times, you know, they may relapse once, twice. It don't matter. They could relapse a million times. But if that one time they finally recover and they stay sober, then that's all that matters, right? So don't lose hope, you know? Don't lose hope, but at the same time, remember, you have your own life at the end of the day. You know, you have to love your life. You have to focus on you. But also, at the same time, don't lose hope on them. Uh, 
we also we did an episode on tough love a while back i mean tough love is cool but for shit like this i think many people try the tough love because the tough love would work normally you know if if i think if you're thinking on the surface you're thinking tough love will work because if you go back to the whole episode we did on tough love it would kind of feel like it would make sense that it would work right however with this i really don't think that the tough love works right because of everything that the addict is going through and because a lot of times depression comes with it, all that, I do th think that the tough love isn't a go here. Okay. Um, so that's that. And stay flexible. Okay. Flexible as in, you know, like try to talk to them when you can. Like even if you can't be with them all the time whatever like do try to just do what you can be a little open-minded okay be a little flexible with their situation and really just listen to them and if you love them you'll do what you have to do okay shit ain't easy but i know y'all got this <laughs> i know y'all definitely do all right um when you love an addict it could teach you a lot of things you know, um, it teaches you that there's a dark side to every type of neighborhood. You know, I, I definitely believe that because shit happens all over America, happens all over in all our different towns. And a lot of times you weren't expecting it. You were not expecting it in your house, in your little town. It ain't just in the hood, all right? It ain't just in the hood. And it'll happen when you least expect it. So, hold up. But yeah, it'll definitely happen when you least expect it. When you least expect it, expect it. <laughs> You'll realize that the upbringings you have doesn't matter. If you're rich, you could be fucking... Poor in a heartbeat. That's riches in heart. Riches in riches in anything. Um, loving an addict, it also it really teaches you the pain of um, complete heartbreak. You know, like being completely broken hearted. You, you, de you definitely, you know, you learn that and, and it teaches you that. So, if you feel that way, I think that's, um, I think it's understandable. And I think it's okay. You know, that's that's what you're going to feel. Because this is loving an addict. This is, this is someone that you loved. Not them anymore, okay? They're not the person you knew when, you know, like when, when they're fucking around, that's just not them. You know, um, even when you look at them, their eyes aren't the same anymore. It hurts more than anything to go through it. And for some reason, you can't leave them no matter how much it hurts. You know, when, when you when you really love them, when you really, really love them. Sometimes they don't make it. They'll get clean, they'll go to rehab, they'll relapse, and then they're gone forever. That's the worst part of loving an addict. Giving them a piece of your heart and having it leave with them, leaving you broken. But you can't be broken. You have to stay strong. You have to know that they, even though they may not seem that they love you because they're fucking around, and they're lying, this and that. They probably still really do love you. But right now they're just going through something. And just because you're heartbroken because of the fact of their of their situation. Doesn't mean that they don't love you. It doesn't mean that things can't change. Okay. 
Um, and, and with that, I think that loving the addict, it teaches you to love hard. And it, it teaches that, it kind of teaches you that unconditional love. You know? It takes so much effort to not walk away because of the hurt that the drug is causing you. The one who isn't even doing it, like, like you're not even doing it. And it's going to hurt you almost just as bad because of how much you love them. You know? You don't leave for one reason. Because you love them. And you know they need you, even if they don't know it. So. It's definitely wild. <laughs> you know? Um, it teaches you patience. Loving addict definitely teaches, teaches you patience. Because just when you think that everything's good, it can may not be good. It takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. It just doesn't. Their body, their body won't let them. They'll ache. They'll sweat. They'll crave the thing that makes everything better to them, or that they think will makes it better. You know, I mean, shit. If you've been there and you loved an addict to where that shit was better in a fucking couple days, and I salute you. They chant it out. But most of the time, it takes time. So you have to be patient. You know, if if you're if you if you do love an addict. You have to be patient. And if you if you really love them and, and you want change, you have to be patient. But at the same time, don't be too patient. You know? Um, because you never know when there's that one day where they're going to fuck up. All right? And they're not going to wake up. And they're not going to be around tomorrow. You never know. I mean, that's 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 the game that they're playing with. They're playing with their life, you know. So, don't be too patient. Don't just say, "Hey, you know, they'll they'll get better tomorrow. They're gonna recover soon. I know they're gonna do better eventually." Nah. As a team, and as if you if you really really love them, y'all gotta figure out a way how to get them as clean, get them clean. As soon as possible. For real. As soon as possible. Because you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Like I always say all the time on here. And you don't know how much time they have on this earth. Alright. Because God forbid something could happen. You never know. Like fuck up. Who knows. So. Don't be too patient. Um. I'm going to get off this subject for now. This is a tough one for me. Because I'm, I'm a little too familiar with all this. You know? Um, I've said it here before. I don't want to dwell on it. But my mom was an addict. My mom passed away um, from, from actually from, from drug abuse. So I'm not going to go too much in depth on here. Um, but I want to talk about this again because I know there's millions of people that are dealing with this. And there's so much to talk about it. So we're we're definitely going to touch on it again. But I'm about I'm going to wrap it up for now. It's a little uh, too much all in one shot. All right. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. But also, w with that being said, it, it does take a toll on you, yo. So if you love an addict, you got to think about you too at the end of the day. All right. You have your own life. You have your own goals. You have you have your life. You at the end of the day. You can't put your life on hold for anybody else. All right. But remember, they're a person too. They have feelings. They fucked up. That doesn't mean that they can't recover. Become sober. Alright. Um, anyone who's going through something like this. You, you want to kick it. And you want to talk more about it. Hit me up. Um, or you can schedule a call in. We can do it right here live on a podcast. Whatever. Or more private if you want. However yo. It's up to you guys. Alright. Um, if you can. 
If you're listening to this on iTunes, if you could hit us with a review, I'd greatly, greatly appreciate it. If you're anywhere else, share it, tell a friend, tell a friend. It really, really helps us over here at Therapy Without a Degree. All right. Um, what did I want to shout out today? Today, I want to shout out that Chloroseptic Eminem remix. That shit was fire because y'all know I fucking love hip hop. I love rap. So shout out to that. Go listen to it if you haven't heard it. If you thought fucking Revival was whack, you're whack. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing. But for real, it's a whole different type. Like, this shit's just fire. So just go listen to that shit. He killed it. And, uh, yeah. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Sorry, y'all. We, we know we're not rocking with the video right now. We're going to be back doing the video. But just subscribe. Because once we back on the video, we we just going nuts. I got a lot of plans. I actually, uh... You know, I want to make it right for you guys. All right. So hit us up in the comments. Hit me up. Follow us on social media at Therapy Without a Degree. Uh, sorry if I was kind of out of it this episode. Like I said, this one's a little rough to talk about, especially here by myself. <laughs> but we're going to get back into it. You never know. You never know how soon. Maybe next week. Maybe we'll do a part two. You never know. I, uh, deuces. Peace.